CKS Learning Series Point of View 10th Topic is Restrict Resource Sys Calls with the SecComp I am in a training.linuxfoundation.org Right here the CKS syllabus If you look at the system hardening Apparently use kernel hardening tools such as AppArmor SecComp In the last video we have seen about the AppArmor which is also the same kernel hardening SecComp is also same kernel hardening but app armor purpose is different seccom purpose is different so both are used for the kubernetes security point of view and another point is uh, everything is there in this particular github uh, page where under 3 uh, if you go to the 3.4 apparently use kernel hardening tool seccom so everything is there and its official documentation link is this and it will open this right so let's get so Basically Linux is called so this entire topic if you go to the documentation containers is called so basically let's understand what is this called so If you look at the any Linux machine with respect to Kubernetes we will call it as a host Every host will have hardware like a CPU memory etc and every Linux machine will be having a kernel space which is on top of the hardware hardware on top of that kernel space and there will be another called user space this user space we will be deploying our applications like a node.js python and all this application python golang or shell script or any application so these application basically whenever executing this application it will make a sys calls internally so those sys calls those calls are called as a sys calls syscalls are like there are hundreds of thousands of syscalls are there so just when you click something and when you do something then internally there it will make a lot of syscalls so here the main purpose of this particular seccomp is restrict the container syscall so why we want to restrict here if you restrict the advanced syscalls so that if you don't restrict so that this application may hack you or compromise your system so whereas kubernetes is nothing but everything is a container so this app is nothing but a pod a pod is making a sys calls and it may hack the machine that's a compromise that's what the this tool this tool so let's understand this tool further seccomp seccomp is nothing but as per the documentation which is a secure computing mode right so basically what it does basically it is basically restrict the syscalls to a resource here resource is what kubernetes resource nothing but deployments pods pod is nothing but contain multiple containers so you are restricting the syscalls to containers right and what calls it will restrict such as a linux capabilities like a adjusting a clock time mounting unmounting say whenever you're running an application you don't need to change the clock time right if if my pod is a banking related pod then if somebody hack and change the clock time then there will be a potential danger and also there are a sandbox privileges so basically by leveraging the sandbox privileges and uh, linux capabilities you can restrict what is objective here you are securing the containers by limiting by specifying what they are allowed to do say if my pod has a say nginx a web pod if you allow only very limited it's a web server web server what it require it should take a call parse it and it will serve the traffic it doesn't require any changing the clock time and all right so it's, it's such kind of so we will see further and this sec comp is similar to the app armor same configured through the profile right and what is this profile is about profile is nothing but here the list of syscalls to allow or deny so here linux point of view there are hundreds of syscalls basically by using a seccomp you will be creating a profile that profile will have a list of syscalls and you can mention how many syscall you want to allow how many syscall you want to deny that's what the the seccomp profile seccomp profiles basically where seccomp profile basically enabled at the kubelet level 
So seccomp you need not to install anything separately. It's a part of a kubelet configuration level. Uh, we will see this further. Basically, uh, seccomp is enabled at a kubelet config level. Uh, how you uh, we enable the default seccomp uh, feature? So if you ask me, is this seccomp like restricting the calls, right? So is there any by default restriction by the Docker runtime here in? So if you wanted to enable that, you wanted to restrict, say Docker runtime and cryo runtime and container D, these are the container runtime. Say this container runtime is restricting, say for example, these five calls. If you wanted to use those default restrictions, you have to enable at kubelet level. Right. This is a bit advanced how you enable and all the what is the dependency, what is the feature gate, etc. But just for idea point of view, uh, this is enabled. Now, the next is sample seccom profile. So how the seccom profile is looks like. Right. So basically we will see seccom profile all should be placed at var lib kubelet seccom profile. So basically here var lib kubelet seccom is a kubelet seccomp path under the seccomp whatever the profile you are creating a profile folder under that you are keeping right so basically this is the place where you need to keep the seccomp profile and seccomp profiles are the three different types one is a audit type violation type fine grain so what exactly this audit and violation audit is nothing but whenever you make a profile as an audit all the syscall will be logs logged at syslogs whenever you keep a violation that means those syscall will be rejected it means like this violation and fine grain this is a custom say i want only 10 calls only allowed rest all are restricted something like that so seccom profile has a default action and action so we will see in the next slide so seccom profile can be loaded into the three different modes so you can load the seccom profile as a disabled strict and filtered whether you wanted to apply the these profiles as a strict disabled and filtered this is at the bit advanced but for now we will be focusing on the only profile and how you apply let's see the seccom profile so as we see in the previous slide seccom profile are three different types right so here audit here audit what we are doing is default action something is there so just wait i will explain what exactly it is here this whenever you apply this profile default action is scmp which is seccom act means action which is a log means audit log as the name suggests which will only audit only just logs it and the second one is a violation violation is what it will give the error so if you apply this particular profile seccom act as an error number so just it will throw the error third one is fine grain fine grain here you see this is the actual customized profile what exactly it is is I, you can specify any name the name doesn't matter so basically here if you look at here default action and action so here default action whenever i apply this profile by default it should throw error for all syscall but whereas one two three four five six seven for these seven profile only allow means whenever your container makes a call allow and architecture for what are the different type of linux system architectures you wanted to apply you can specify 32 x 86 86 and 64 something like that right so these are the seccom profile so if you wanted to do then always go for the fine grain and then you apply whatever the condition right now let's go to the seccom how you implement the seccom we know about the seccom profile and its types and all so first what you will be doing is you have a kubernetes cluster say let's take one master node and two worker nodes right and i have a cluster what i do in order to implement a seccom first is create a profile yes how how you will create a profile if you look it here right uh, in the official documentation just scroll down this is the profile 
download the example profile is a simple json files right it's a json create a json profile and copy to the sex copy seccom profile and apply to the pod security context that's it then your container system are secure but here copy the seccom profile where to copy same as a app armor this seccom profile will be should be copied to the both the nodes you can ask i have a two node three node yes if you have a three node you need to copy in the all the nodes because pod may be scheduled on a, any node or else you have a specific nodes are deployed in the specific node then you deploy in the in that node only it's up to you but typically if you wanted to leverage the uh, restriction then you need to synchronize the profile only so here point is create copy and just apply to the pod then how you apply to the pod you will be applying as a pod security context as a seccom profile key value pair so we will see this is a pod right this audit pod simple and here spec under security context you will be applying as a seccom profile type is local host and local host profile is profiles slash audit dot json so i am trying to apply audit dot json file to this pod so it has to be applied here so here type is local host what is this type so these types are basically again the three different types one is the first is a local host local host is nothing but you have to copy this profile in the local kubernetes node and where is the path this is the profiles under profiles you need to copy the this json second is runtime default say i am using a cryo runtime i am using container d i am using a docker i am using a something else runtime that runtime has a by default there are some restriction i wanted to apply so instead of type use a runtime default there is another one called a third type called unconfined so i don't want to use these two but no profile so just specify as a unconfined unconfined is nothing but if there is no default runtime in definitely no profile right makes sense now let's look at the how this pod looks like here i have a one pod called audit pod and this is a definition so if you look at the documentation everything is there so this is a my audit violation and fine grain and all the uh, example if you scroll down bit there is audit pod so everything is here right so basically if you look at the ppt yeah so this is all right so in the audit pod under the security context right seccom profile right type is local host yes i wanted to copy this json audit.json in the under profile folder right so in the previous slide as we see so here profiles audit.json so what if if i have a different profile so you specify the same type equal to local host whereas profile violation.json so i have a here three profile the samples are given right audit violation if i wanted to apply this profile you just simply change the name and the third one fine grain pod so just they given as a fine pod and is a file name is a different and here one thing is we need to uh, make a notice here security context allow privilege escalation must be false that means whenever you are running this particular pod pod level you are applying a profile container level you need to disable the privilege escalation because one pod can have a multiple container right so this container should not have a any privilege escalation right so that's a one of the point to, to make note here basically another type is default say i don't want to use any local profile but whatever the runtime default uh, specific profile yes just simply security context seccom profile type equal to runtime default so you have to specify like that but one thing is we need to make sure is security context allow privilege escalation must be false that is a one of the most important right okay so now let's see uh, how it looks like so i am in a my kubernetes cluster 
uh, kubectl get uh, pod right i don't have uh, anything and it's uh, just one master and one worker node right if you look at the ppt and the next is just commands right uh, and all the commands are available in this particular documentation right everything profile and all right so now let's go to the documentation and accordingly we will follow what documentation is this right so first of all uh, here right so um, first we need to uh, create this profile so we need to create these profiles in a where in the default kubelet uh, location so i am i will ssh into the vagrant ssh so i have a only worker node so i have to ssh into the worker node so i am ssh into the worker node right so yes i am in a worker node one right so, right say uh, sudo su i'll just make it as a worker right system ctl status kubelet right here kubelet is running right and where is the kubelet uh, configuration file is this is the one right warlib say clear cat this is a my kubelet configuration file so uh, warlib kubelet this is the location right so right cd warlib kubelet right ls right so if you look at the documentation right scroll down war lib yeah so this is a default kubelet seccomp specific profile path so you need to make a directory in the here i am in a kubelet uh, mkdir because i wanted to create a path so this is a right hyphen p and right i am created so now ls you will see the or lib kubelet seccom cd seccom right ls yeah there is a profile so ls profile under the profile nothing is there so now if you look at this profile so i wanted to use this example is given in the documentation so first of all i will download the same profile is there in the here i'll just, just simply go and download this profile right so and uh, right number one and uh, number two number three right all done good so now ls profiles yes i can see audit.json fine grain and violation three profiles are created as a part of uh, my powerpoint presentation right so if you look at this right so basically this is our right now created the profile now next slide is copy the second profile right. now copy already copied because i create uh, ideally we should be creating outside of the cluster and then i will just i have directly created so no worries then uh, then next is i have to create a pod so what i will do is i will shell duplicate tab right i am here right so now kubectl get pod right? i don't have anything so first what i will do is kubectl create deployment i wanted to create a uh, deployment called a web right so now kubectl get pod just to, to see right now web pod is running right now as example we will see one by one one is audit right first of all this is a audit pod right so what i will do is i will save pod definition file everything here profile.json so uh, this is the most important right and i will just copy this right this path right so basically kubectl apply hyphen f audit part is now created right now audit part is created kubectl get pod hyphen o wide right and that's it this audit part is scheduled on a where work one worker node because i have a only one node cluster one one master node and one worker node so right so now let's wait for the container to create now container is running audit part so now this audit part is making a syscalls 
and it is using a what kind of a profile it's a audit.json so what is our audit.json is basically uh, just we are logging everything how i wanted to see if you wanted to see the what are the syscalls is making you go to the worker node right and where to see there is a location called a var log sys right so if you look at this i'm in a, a worker node i'll just uh, go to the now here say tail hyphen f right so these are the syscalls it's making who is making this audit part so let's do some experiment here now i have created audit part right so now i will create a one uh, service to the same part so here kubectl get svc no service only the default kubernetes service so now kubectl expose pod audit pod so i am exposing this audit pod as a service as a node port 5678 right now audit pod is different now kubectl svc right now audit pod is running under this one so now i have to access this how do i access so a kubectl get node hyphen o y what is a my master node ip address is not this one 192 168 this is the my master node ip right and what is the my node put here 30040 right 30040 this is a node port right so what is the text messages came just made a some syscall if you look at the documentation right just made a some syscall right so in the documentation they are showing the different way but i am using i am taking a simple approach right here syscall so i will try to refresh or else you can go here try to duplicate a new tab and here curl also it will give me the same but at the same time if you look at here right i am in a worker node there are so many syscalls it's make right if you look at the syslogs right this is the word the, right so http eco right we we do the curl right so basically whenever you make a curl basically this is a pid right and um, this is audit id this is a type so this is the syscall basically it's it's not blocking or anything but whereas it's logging everything in the under the this particular so whenever your use case demands to log all the syscalls then this is a audit is a, the good example now let's look at the another example so for we will delete the uh, this service so basically i will go to the my so here i'll delete the service and as well as i delete the audit part right right so now yeah it's deleted so now clear now next is a violation part so let's i will copy the same so violation part is the same there is a image and a violation is this is the violation.json whereas a violation.json is simply rejecting all the syscalls so nothing will work right here the violation nothing will work just simply violate everything so let's see so violation part is here just simply i uh, will make use of this uh, copy and go here if ctl apply iphone f and this is a violation part right. yeah right keep ctl get part iphone o wide violation part is error yes that's good keep ctl get svc right now now if you look at the uh, here we are already tailing right so, yeah, see so basically here violation hyphen pod i'm just searching here violation pod in the item 2 there is a great feature in this particular item 2 right i'm using item 2 here violation pod so basically what is the problem is with the violation pod so if you look at the kubectl describe pod violation pod right so back back of restarting a field container so why the back of restart container will happen is because container is not able to start right 
container is not able to start means why it's not able to start it because it has a, a profile is applied that profile is blocking the syscalls right so it means in order to start the container it requires some syscalls internally right that's what the it's happening so that's what the it's given uh, uh, crash loop back off and all right so and let's see the last example which is a fine grain part right so kubectl i will delete the part right so here uh, kubectl so let's get a clear kubectl get part right right now kubectl get svc no svcs are uh, kubectl delete part violation part i will just delete the now now kubectl get pod now only web pod is running which is the the usual one now the last one is a fine grain pod so what i will do is i will try to apply this again right so now i am so this this is basically tiling is happening right now go here kubectl apply hyphen f right and now fine grain pod what is this fine pod is doing is basically under the profile fine pod dot json is there race yes under the profile we pasted this file what is this fine pod is basically reject everything but only allow this syscalls only right that's what the it's doing now here now my pod is created kubectl get pod right fine pod is running now the next thing is as per the documentation fine part this is a fine part so let's create a one uh, fine part is now successfully running so now i wanted to see what's happening inside right so yeah so here uh, here also they suggested to expose a new pod new service here uh, kubectl get svc no service is running for the fine grain pod so i will just try to expose the as a node port right kubectl expose right kubectl get svc right now fine pod service is running under 31994 port i'll go to the last tab curl sorry http and my what is the my master node ip is this right just made a sys call 31994 which is 31991 fine grain pod right so here i made and uh see these are the um i will show you i will reopen that right so just i will do the tail f right so this is the so basically here uh it's very difficult to, to test uh, so where um you need to go inside the pod you may but the basic idea is basically let's try to run this so there is no http so what i will do is cat iphone f syslogs out of that my pod is running kubectl get pod right my my fine grain pod is running with that profile now i am grab for hyphen i insensitive and what is the pod name fine hyphen pod oops oh sorry my bad this cat if should not be used right so this is a fine part so fine hyphen pod i am searching here all right so basically here if you observe the sys calls right uh, maybe you need to drill down further this is a pure linux job now so basically what uh, we can trace by using this sys calls that if you say if you look at here right uh, this one added mac active container id endpoint something this container id right so here the sys call specific id will be there and that id if you decode as a what is exactly syscall that will falls under one of the syscall is this one if you if you disable here the curl here then it won't allow so something like that so basically it will basically it's it's a purely linux uh, kernel control uh, related uh, module 
uh, right where we need to where if you have a this kind of assist logs where you can identify what exactly so the, the basic idea is that so by using a someone in the, in the kubernetes cks exam point of view they they will give the profile but the thing is you need to apply to the pod how you will apply to the pod is a very simple copy to the profile folder in the all the worker nodes and accordingly uh, <clears throat> apply the pod under the security context and allow privilege escalation equal to false so that it will be uh, it will work right and say the for the same example right say docker ps right here there is a fine grain pod right is running fine pod right so here right so i wanted to what i will do is kubectl delete deployment web initial i created i deleted that now kubectl get pod now only one pod is running fine pod right now i am in a node one where i ssh right docker ps so docker logs and fine pod right so basically the fine pod the latest these are the docker logs and there is a what is that the another one so you can check the uh, basically the sys logs docker logs for the uh, further uh, drill down of your what sys calls made and all the basic idea is basically here seccom will have a profile and you will be applying to the kubernetes pods and in that way you can trace by using a sys logs right trace from the sys logs yeah so that is it from for the this point of view and everything is in this documentation is there it's a very simple process and if you wanted to know more about the uh, seccom then definitely there is official documentation we can go and drill down and everything right so right the main point is to uh, note down is kubelet default directory where we need to paste the files under you create a folder under that you need to place right so yeah that's it for the this particular um, seccom point of view so and let me know your comments in the feedback thank you